Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second episode of BDO's PE Market Pulse, where we invite a leader within the private equity ecosystem to share their thoughts on current market activity. I'm your host, Bram Wendy, Assurance National Leader of BDO Canada's private equity practice, and I have the immense pleasure of having Arem Kazim Laka joining us today. Arem is the Senior Managing Director of Value Creation Equities at Ontario Teachers Pension Plan. She's a seasoned transformation leader who has spent the past 20 years in senior operating roles around the globe, driving transformative growth. So welcome, Arem. Nice to be here, thank you. So we'll jump right into the questions here. As one of the largest institutional investors in the world, Ontario Teachers has a truly global outlook on investing and often with a longer term horizon. Looking back at 2023, what were the most significant global trends that defined the year within private equity and private capital? Well, a uh, great question uh, and nothing like starting off with, uh, with a really, really tough one. Um, I, I would say that we see uh, four main trends at play, uh, really, which make the current private equity investing environment probably one of the hardest and most challenging periods since the global financial crisis. And while COVID feels like a while ago, um, in some ways it brought to the forefront um, a few different forces which are actually all at play at the same time at the moment and fundamentally reshaping investing and the way in which alpha is created. So let me go through those four very quickly. I think the first is the end of hyper globalization and hyper growth following COVID. Um, what we see is the ongoing decoupling of US and China with firms diversifying operations away from China. We see higher for longer inflation uh, and higher uh, interest rates than, than we've seen for a very long time in private equity. And, and this is all happening while at, at the same time that we have lower productivity in most of the large economies, um, certainly since the, the GFC. So that's, that's sort of the backdrop. Um, the second uh, trend is the politicization of the marketplace. So political polarization occurring in many countries, the geopolitical um, macro environment is realigning uh, we don't quite know how that will uh, eventually end up, but um, but certainly the, the the plates, the tectonic plates are shifting. Um, and what this means really is that scenario planning and agility are really, really key for global investors. Uh, whereas they used to be able to commit to certain geographies or um, you know, certain concepts for a long time or investment themes for a long time, they're having to be much more agile um, because fundamentally, uh, growth and where growth comes from is changing constantly and how companies operate as a result is, is having to change very fluidly as well. And even in Canada, we've seen, uh, you know, a significant increase in politicization since the 2021 Canadian election. So that's, that's new for Canada. Um, the third sort of main trend is the push to zero carbon and green investing. And as we transition to a low carbon economy uh, in response to climate change, um, we are seeing you know, opportunities for sure, but we're seeing more pressure on businesses. We're seeing increasing social inequity and depleting natural capital. And on the latter, we've seen during the course of this year, are a focus on protecting biodiversity, which will probably um, follow in the same footsteps as climate change in terms of disclosures. Um, and then lastly, um, we've seen the rapid rise of, of Gen, a, uh, Gen AI uh, with the release of uh, ChatGPT. Really, it's iPhone's, uh, AI's iPhone moment. Um, we don't believe it's hype. We believe that Gen AI tools are, are starting to really help companies boost productivities um, in, in different ways. What are some of the key areas of focus for Ontario teachers this year from a value creation perspective? Mm -hmm. So I would just say that there have been, um, you know, value creation efforts uh, across uh, teachers for some time. We actually have value creation efforts in our three different asset classes. Um, but this year we've, we've put extra focus on scaling up our efforts across our main asset classes in order to help our portfolio companies build greater resilience um, 
to compete in the environment that we just spoke about. Um, and we believe that these efforts will actually be really helpful for generating the alpha uh, as the days of cheap leverage and lower interest rates are really gone. Um, and so what this means is that there's been um, a, a much more involved ways for management and um, investors to work together. And I'll give you a couple of examples, really. Yeah. Um, so the first uh, one is, is a North American leading food business that we own. Uh, we, we've helped the management team um, over a number of years uh, expand the number of plants to meet growing demand. We've helped management look at automation to deal with labor shortages. And we've also looked together at smart pricing to help offset you know, inflationary pressure. So really a wide variety of levers um, being looked at and being uh, executed on by, by uh, you know, capable management teams. Second example is another leading North American uh, industrial services business where we've worked with management uh, over time to um, uh, basically insource various franchises and, and become a, a very large North American player in this space. Um, right now, we're actually working with management to, to look at um, the cost base in, in great detail. Uh, and we're bringing some, some uh, expertise, uh, cutting edge expertise to the table. And then I think the third example that we can talk about is where we own a large uh, European education business, um, which together with the management team, we've helped internationalize uh, over the past many years, really doubling the number of, of sites uh, that the, the company operates. Um, currently, we're actually working on helping the management team reset its five-year strategy under a longer hold. Um, mm -hmm. And we're looking at plans to really focus on the organic side of the business uh, to drive top line sustainable um, margin growth as well. So you can hear here there there are um, there's active involvement and active collaboration with management, really looking at a host of of levers, and and that gives you a sense of you know what we're doing um, in in a few examples across the portfolio. No, it's going through different angles and seeing where value can be added and working in collaboration with management. That's that's amazing. Thank you, Ram. So as I previously mentioned, Ontario Teachers, global investor, I want to get your thoughts about how Ontario Teachers Pension Plan looks at sustainability. I know you mentioned a little bit about um, carbon zero or uh, net zero. There's a lot of conversation about ESG metrics and the, the reporting requirements by ISSB. So I want to hear your thoughts about working with companies, keeping sustainability as a core part of the value creation agenda. What are the themes you're seeing? Yeah, so uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, big picture is on the topic of sustainability. Um, we are seeing global warning, warming now at unprecedented new levels that is causing physical impacts um, in, in, the, in the environments in which we operate, um, you know, and, and really the number of sort of, nasty, of of disasters, if you will, has actually grown. So mm -hmm. sustainability and the effort around sustainability is not a nice to have. It's a must have. Uh, and that's how we view it. Um, sustainability reporting is important because it drives transparency on how companies are actually taking action to reduce, um, uh, you know, uh, carbon emissions um, in, in the environments in which they operate. So we definitely embrace the IS, ISB um, uh, sort of headline measurement. It's, it's really important that there's sort of a, a global standard. So how are we sort of leaning into this opportunity? Well, I think everybody will know that um, teachers is committed to achieve a goal of a net zero by 2050 with interim goals of 45% um, uh, emissions intensity reduction by 25 and 67 by 2030. So these are these are really bold commitments. Mm -hmm. um, and the way we're leaning into that is through um, really um, helping to accelerate the energy transition. And that could mean doing traditional LBOs, but that could also mean investing into different climate solutions, green bonds, transition assets. Um, and you know, earlier this year, uh, teachers acquired um, a majority stake in a business that helps develop um, you know, renewable natural gas uh, across North America. And we committed a 
capital of about 250 million. These are new examples of innovative ways to back the energy transition. Um, and of course, on top of new innovative ways that I've just described here, across the different sectors in which we invest, we're actively working with management to help achieve um, those goals of net zero by 2050. No, there's definitely an increase in appetite here with these types of investments. So that's great that that's the, that's the direction that teachers is also going in. So Ram, we're in December and I have to ask this question. What are your predictions for 2024 and how can private equity firms prepare to navigate the incoming changes effectively? We'd love to hear. Yes, well, I, I think we I think there is probably consensus that we um, are going to con continue to see uh, a bumpy next 12 months, uh, mm -hmm. both in terms of deal making and in terms of continued pressure on um, you know uh, companies in which we invest. Um, you know, inflation, though it might be peaking, it will remain sticky, probably unwind slowly. Um, wage inflation is still driving tight labor markets uh, and interest rates. Again, while they may have peaked, the headline rates are still not going to come down much in the next 12 months. So this actually means that M&A and, and corporate investments are expected to remain muted. That also has an impact on the, the private equity deal uh, market as well. And I would say, you know, watch out for um, interesting investments into AI and to energy, um, into the energy transition space, um, which may be the bright sparks uh, as we look into 2024. Um, my view is that the companies who will be the winners in three to five years will be those who took the bold steps now uh, during this period that we're facing to transform and to reshape. Um, and I think there's a, a fantastic opportunity to work closely with management on value creation. Um, probably one of the most exciting periods actually to do that. No, for sure. The only thing constant here is change. So, well, that's all the time we had for this episode. Again, really want to thank you, Rem, for taking the time and joining us today. This was thank amazing. You. And thank you to all of our viewers for joining. Tune into our next session in February, where we will kick off 2024. Goodbye. <laughs>